This is the World Organic News for the week ending 17th of December 2018. John Moore reporting. Decarbonise the air and recarbonise the soil. This week, the news for Monsanto, now part of Bayer, continues to be unpleasant. Unpleasant because the questionable actions of Monsanto when it was an independent company. As with these things, I like to find the original article, but let's start with my first contact. From the blog Natural Revival Health. Monsanto behind papers declaring their pesticides safe. Quote, If you are aware of the environmental and health problems stemming from the company Monsanto, you probably know they are responsible for degrading our food supply and adding to the health risks going on in the world. But did you know that they even faked their own studies? Yes, Monsanto was found to be behind studies that said glyphosate was not likely to cause cancer in humans. You can read about this fraudulent and unethical behaviour by this major company that has caused so much environmental destruction and human sickness by reading the Natural News article entitled Journal Corrections on Glyphosate Review Confirms What We've Been Saying for Years. Monsanto released ghost-written papers declaring supposed safety for their pesticides in quote. Understandably, the language is a little sensational. The idea of the peer-reviewed article system, which is the bedrock of scientific publishing, has been corrupted, is important, and we'll get to the implications of this later. This article referenced the following one from the Natural News. Journal Corrections on Glyphosate Review confirms what we've been saying for years. Monsanto released ghost-written papers declaring supposed safety for their pesticides. Now, this website is one that would normally raise all kinds of questions for me odd advertisements along the lines of top surgeons recommend and that sort of thing. But, and I quote, Monsanto, the manufacturer of the popular glyphosate herbicide Roundup, does such a good job of trying to downplay the health dangers of glyphosate that you might almost be tempted to believe them. When detractors try to claim that Monsanto themselves are behind studies that supposedly show their pesticides were safe, it's easy for the firm to dismiss the idea as a conspiracy theory. However, the truth is finally revealed, at least in one case, and the academic journal Critical Reviews in Toxology has issued corrections to two articles that it published reviewing glyphosate's safety, end quote. Now, there's a fine line between a conspiracy theory that exists and one that requires the wearing of tinfoil hats, but I digress. Getting to the journal Critical Reviews in Toxology took me through the blog from Baum, Hedlund, Aresti and Goldman, consumer attorneys. Quote, Critical Review and Toxicology's publisher, Taylor and Harris, issues a rare expression of concern because the review authors fail to provide an adequate explanation as to why the necessary level of transparency was not met on first submission, end quote. Taylor and Francis, the publishers of the original article, or so I thought, are actually the original publisher of five articles relating to the toxicology of glyphosate. They requested explanation from the authors of all these articles as to why they did not disclose Monsanto funding. The authors, the authors of only three articles have responded, and even then, quote, we have not received an adequate explanation as to why the necessary level of transparency was not met on first submission. We thank those who brought this matter to our attention. When reading the articles, we recommend that readers take this context into account. We will continue to work to update these articles and ensure full disclosure of all contributions to them. End quote. So clearly the language has moved from sensational to considered. I think the final quote is the most damning, but what does it mean for those on the ground? It means that what many of us have always considered, the use of systemic pesticides is a danger to the users, the food consumer and the environment at large. Given the financial returns from the herbicide, it is not surprising Monsanto managed to place a finger on the scales weighing its safety. But it is not just the income from the sale of glyphosate, there is also a need from a shareholder value position to avoid large, to avoid large numbers of payouts to individuals for illnesses and for the remediation of landscapes. It is this last contingent liability that must truly frighten Bayer's shareholders now they are legally and financially responsible for the actions of Monsanto. The remediation of the effects of glyphosate will take time. The resistance weed created by the GM varieties may never be removed from the biosphere. And glyphosate is but the tip of the spear. It affects us all. 
particularly if we are on the land, but also if we have a local council, and who doesn't? These entities have long been identified by Monsanto and other glyphosate producers as a cash cow. Farmers will only use sufficient herbicide to be financially rewarding. Local councils and their wars on invasive species will pour almost endless amounts of cash, other people's cash, yours and mine, into the fight. That climate change is driving a large number of these invasive species species movements is also an issue, and you can see the financial returns for the glyphosate producers. I would argue we need to train our local councils, ag departments and so on in the process of processes of vegetative succession and the ecologies of weeds, as discussed in episode 127, link in the show notes, rather than the attack, attack and attack again while leaving conditions for weeds extant. What's needed is a general educational program based upon ecology rather than emotion, and I bumped up against the emotional when it comes to people's self-definition. It's the use round up, it's quick and safe, they told us so attitude. What is actually unsaid but implied is that only greenies would advocate against the use of Roundup. There's an us and them attitude. The us is the traditional rural community, the salt of the earth types and so on, who have seen every attempt to clean farming as an attack upon not just their lifestyles but upon them and their decision making, which is fair enough when you see it from their point of view. The use of chemicals was and is pushed by the departments of ag, primary industries, and the experts who developed the rust resistant. These were the experts that developed rust resistant wheat, improved yields, and so on. So they had a track record of getting things right. What the long explanation of the Monsanto fiddling with results discussed above shows is that these salts of the earth types have been conned. And no one likes to be conned, and very few people like to admit it. Until the use of chemicals is decoupled from the self-description of these individuals, I cannot see a way forward other than by example on the ground. An example on the ground is something we can all do. And on that note, I'll draw this episode to a conclusion. Remember, decarbonise the air, recarbonise the soil. So with all of the above in mind and the fact that we live in the 21st century, I'm opening up applications for a regenerative agriculture mastermind group. We'll be limited to 12 people. We'll meet weekly online to discuss our successes, challenges and decisions. The wisdom of the crowd applied to the necessary field, to this necessary field of endeavour. You can have a look at the intro page and click through to the application at worldorganicnews.com forward slash mastermind dash application. There's also a link in the show notes. And of course the podcasting checklist is still available over at mrjohnmoore.com. A transcript of this episode is available at worldorganicnews.com. Thanks for listening. I'll be back next week.